The deep, mysterious waters of planet 4546b have provided many adventurers with countless hours of breathtaking exploration and terror. But this planet, first detailed in the interactive documentary Subnautica, continues to reveal new alien underwater biomes positively teeming with life. Recently, a new sector was discovered here by a survivor who crash-landed, this one a frigid wasteland. At least, that's how it appears above the surface. Indeed, in these cold waters, biology takes forms never seen in other dimensions. From newly discovered deep-sea leviathans to social marine life with surprising intelligence, to coastal predators uniquely adapted to life between ice and sea. My name is Dr. Felix Nebula, and today we're returning to Planet 4546b, and more specifically, to the infamous Sector Zero. And to you, dear traveler, I say welcome aboard the dimension-hopping bioship Manta. As we descend to the planet's surface, you may feel a little tickle in the back of your mind that might say this is a bad idea. But don't worry, we'll be sticking to the shallows for now. From dark abysses to calm reefs, Planet 4546b has something for everyone. Well, unless you suffer from thalassophobia. Previously, we explored some of this life without venturing far from the crater, as it's known. But today, we'll be visiting a very different part of the planet, one that was relatively unknown until yet another more recent crash landing in an area known as Sector Zero. Now, unlike the crater, here you'll see vast ice sheets stretching as far as the eye can see, broken up only by dark arctic waters beneath. And yet, this region is also teeming with life. To ease us in a little bit, we'll start in the shallower areas. But while the water here is bright and clear, no part of this planet should be considered safe. Approaching surface, restructuring for marine environment. Excellent, thank you. Now there is one organism I'd really like to find first. Manta, please use our patented OmniGrab array to bring one on board. This is the sea monkey. And before you ask, no, it's not related to the novelty pets sold on Earth. Those, by the way, were actually brine shrimp. Sea monkeys, the amazing instant pets for the whole family. In fact, there's really no perfect analog on Earth for many of the creatures on planet 4546b. Though many bear similarities to certain species, being aliens, there is no consistent categorization. Even so, one could compare this sea monkey to something like a dolphin on Earth. Like dolphins, they display remarkable intelligence, social behavior, curiosity, and, one might say, mischievousness. But unlike dolphins, they possess articulating appendages much like arms, each terminating in two digits, the terminal ends of which exhibit suction cups, so to speak, much like those of octopodes on Earth. Don't you mean octopi? I meant exactly what I said. And in fact, this isn't the only similarity to cephalopods they exhibit. Scans indicate that those antenna-like protrusions on the lower jaw are packed with specialized sensory organs, capable of detecting both biological and artificial materials. Furthermore, the sea monkey's brain structure exhibits neural clusters that appear to be dedicated to problem-solving and tool assessment. This intelligence, paired with their inherently curious behavior, can lead them to be quite annoying for anyone attempting to gather resources in the area, as sea monkeys tend to take those resources, tools, or items and bring them back to their nests for decoration. What is the purpose of that large head crest? Good question. No one knows for sure. It's quite possible that it's simply a form of sexual display, though little sexual dimorphism has been observed in this species. Some have theorized that it could be used for ramming obstacles, predators, or other members of its species, though I think this unlikely simply due to the structure's apparent flexibility. In any case, I am overjoyed to find this creature in its natural habitat. Finding an alien organism with this level of social intelligence is remarkable indeed. Plus, they're kind of cute. Agreed. But we'd better move on to our next subject of study. Aha! Here comes one now! This, dear traveler, is the newtfish. Now, based on its unassuming size and vibrant coloration, you might assume that this is an herbivore. But how terribly wrong you would be. What appears at first to be a typical fish's mouth is actually a highly specialized feeding apparatus, a flexible, expandable veil that can deploy in a fraction of a second. The veil itself contains seven concentric rings of specialized muscle tissue, each capable of independent control. When deployed, these muscles work in perfect synchronization to create a perfectly circular shape. 
Once prey is caught in the oral veil, seven rows of sharp interior barbs make escape virtually impossible. Each attempt to wiggle free only drives the prey further toward the central mouth. Furthermore, it appears that the interior of the veil contains some of the most sophisticated pressure-sensing organs we've encountered in a creature this size. These sensors can detect minute changes in water pressure, allowing the newt fish to literally feel its prey's movement patterns and adjust its strike accordingly. Finally, once the veil engulfs its target, rings of contractile tissue create a powerful peristaltic wave, pushing prey directly into the digestive cavity. Interestingly, digestion itself can take weeks, so feedings are relatively infrequent. It reminds me of the sarcastic fringe head on Earth. An apt comparison, though personally I prefer satire. Shall we seek out the next organism for study? For this one, we may need to venture into the semi-murky waters of the lily pad islands. Oh, my apologies, dear traveler. There's something about gliding softly through these waters that makes my eyelids heavy. I'd love to take a power nap, but Manta's interior lighting can't be adjusted while moving for some reason. Fortunately, this particular excursion is brought to you by Manta Sleep. What a great name! Isn't it? Manta Sleep Masks are luxurious, blackout sleep masks that are unlike those flimsy, semi-transparent masks you may have tried before. Sometimes, you just want to feel like your eyes are being enveloped by a soft, loving embrace. And because Manta Masks have adjustable eye cups that block out 100% of the light without putting pressure on your eyes, that's exactly what wearing one feels like. So not only can you nap even when the sun or interior lights are at max brightness, Manta Sleep Masks come in a variety of styles for a variety of applications. For example, the cooling mask soothes eyes and sinuses, which is immensely helpful during allergy season, at least back on Neoterra. But my favorite is probably the sound mask, which combines all the elements of a super comfortable mask with razor-thin, tab-adjustable speakers over the ears, so you can drift to sleep to music from your phone, or even better, the haunting calls of a glow whale, even if, like me, you're a side sleeper. And for those joining us now, Manta Sleep is running their biggest sale of the year from November 29 to December 3rd, so the timing couldn't be better. But either way, if you're ready to give your eyeballs a big hug and nap in comfort, all you have to do is visit one of the linked products below and enter code SAFARI at checkout for 10% off your order, or you can visit the link in the description. Till then, I think I might drift off for just a moment. Ahem, maybe now is not the best time, Doctor. <sighs> you're probably right. I think we've just reached the lily pad islands. <laughs> Like the newtfish, this creature seems innocuous, especially given its plant-like ornamentation. You might even think it to be similar to Earth's sea dragons, though of course much larger. And you'd be right, but that's exactly the kind of drastic underestimation that will get you in trouble on planet 4546b. If you'll recall, during our last expedition to this planet, we encountered the Mesmer, a predator that uses complex visual stimuli to hijack its prey's neural pathways. The lily paddler exhibits something equally sophisticated, but fortunately for us, it's used for defense rather than hunting. You see, it's capable of releasing precise combinations of neuroactive compounds into the water. Unlike the Mesmer's aggressive visual assault on the nervous system, the Lily Paddler's approach is more subtle, though arguably more elegant. Its pheromonal cocktail temporarily disrupts higher brain functions, specifically targeting areas responsible for spatial awareness and short-term memory formation. In response, predators find themselves suddenly disoriented, unable to maintain focus on their intended target, and often forgetting what drew their attention in the first place. Furthermore, those feather-like appendages, on its dorsal hump specifically, are bioluminescent. At night, the lily paddler moves them ever so subtly, mimicking the movement patterns of schools of smaller fish, which many predators won't even attempt to pursue. Lastly, you'll notice the ventral pair of appendages bear a remarkable similarity to the claws of decapods. Look it up. Those are used for foraging along the ocean floor for food, usually some kind of seed. We'd better move on if we're to maintain our schedule, Doctor. Ah, uh, you're right. Let's ascend to the surface for a moment. I think it's time we explored the ice. That sure is a strange looking penguin. Well, it would be if it were a penguin at all. This is a penguin, and there's a huge difference. For one thing, you'll notice that like many other organisms on this planet, the penguin possesses two sets of eyes, two relatively small ones near to the front, and two larger along the sides. This provides the penguin with an impressive field of view, and as such makes them both excellent hunters and very difficult to capture. 
Of course, their most notable feature is probably their horizontally opening beak, located at the top of the head and making up almost a full third of their height. Now please, as a general word of warning, take care when approaching these creatures. They're not aggressive to humans, but nonetheless, you don't want to risk getting on their bad side. Why is that? Well, once you see this creature open its mouth, it might make more sense. The penguin's beak, quite unlike the vertical opening we see in Earth's birds, contains rows of modified scales that function as interlocking dental spines, which serve to not only keep struggling fish-like prey from escaping their bite, but also to force their prey's bodies deeper toward the throat. Though they're of little threat to us, these spines also serve to take the penguin from a relatively cute creature to something utterly terrifying. Moving on. Besides the obvious anatomical and physiological differences, penguins do exhibit similarity to Earth's penguins in other ways besides appearance. For example, their hunting patterns are similar, with adults chasing down a variety of prey, usually from the waters below, before returning to their penguins, as they're called, to regurgitate their meal. And when severe weather hits, penguins form tight circular formations, with adults creating a protective ring around their young gripping the ice with retractable, serrated claws on both feet and their tail. These claws are not great for navigating the ice, and penguins are often observed falling over, but they are great for holding in place against this planet's brutal wind. Speaking of which, I think perhaps the storm is coming in now. So it is. Quickly though, there's just one more terrestrial organism I'd really like to find. Its silhouette is hard to make out because this creature is perfectly camouflaged against the white ice, but it is there. What we see before us is one of the most remarkable examples of adaptive radiation on planet 4546b, and those familiar with the warmer waters of the crater may recognize its general body plan. I'm not sure what you mean. Believe it or not, this creature before us is, in fact, the cousin of the fully aquatic stalker. Well, now that you mention it. Exactly. Let's begin with its somewhat intimidating dentition. Two pairs of enlarged teeth curve upward from the bottom jaw, with a single forward-pointing tooth centered directly between them. But while the snow stalker's teeth are larger than the stalker's, its mouth is actually shorter. However, per square inch, this gives it an even stronger bite force. You'll probably also notice a striking similarity to Earth's polar bears, primarily in its size as well as its white, shaggy fur, which, as we've seen, helps it blend in with its environment. But of course, there are many differences. For one, the snow stalker is relatively social, and they tend to hunt in packs. This makes them even more dangerous, especially when visibility is low thanks to this region's intense snowstorms. How do the snow stalkers deal with these storms? It seems like most other forms of life huddle down or escape to the water. In this case, their fur is more than able to keep them warm, though they are often found within caves of ice or rock. And in order to keep from losing track of each other, especially in a blizzard, snow stalkers possess three bioluminescent patches on their skin. One on the distal end of the tail, one near the forehead, and strangely enough, on their tongue. Despite its massive size, the snow stalker can move with surprising stealth. Once it spots prey, it hunts it down with a single-minded determination, pursuing its target with calculated aggression. Only bright light seems to deter it. But in the darkness of an arctic storm, there are few creatures more perfectly adapted to survival. Doctor, that storm is looking worse. I think we should retreat to the water. Alright, alright. The timing is excellent anyway. There is one creature that we simply cannot leave without seeing first. Listen, do you hear that haunting call? It's beautiful, if a bit unsettling. It sounds like a whale on Earth. An apt comparison if I've ever heard one. That is the call of a glow whale. Manta? Isn't it magnificent? You may not be able to tell thanks to the OmniGrab's patented spatial compression technology, but the glow whale itself is enormous at approximately 30 meters, placing it squarely within the Leviathan class. And as you mentioned, Manta, fascinatingly, the glow whale has independently developed many features we associate with Earth's largest marine mammals. Like whales, they travel in communal groups in the open ocean and are often seen breaching the surface. They are propelled by a graceful bifurcated fluke and guided by enormous sail-like flippers that extend laterally from the dorsal region. Though they are still classified as pectoral fins, it appears that these large fins serve a purpose beyond propulsion. Scans indicate interior networks of specialized blood vessels that can selectively dilate or constrict, allowing for precise control over heat exchange with the surrounding water. 
And then there's the reason for the first half of its name. Like many other creatures on this planet, the glow whale is bioluminescent, with multiple photophores spread across its body. These are perhaps most notable at the corners of their eyes and in the small pods on the tips of their fins. But what really stands out to me are those glowing blue horns atop their heads. Now on Earth, whales receive sound waves primarily through their lower jawbones, which conduct vibrations to their inner ears. The glow whale's horns operate similarly, though they are far more sensitive and can discern directionality far better. Something like a biological tuning fork. Because these horns resonate with specific frequencies, glow whales can identify pod members at great distances. They're even useful for locating prey. Interestingly, glow whales possess expandable ventral pleats that allow them to take in massive gulps of water, straining out shoals of fish. However, instead of baleen plates, they've developed rows of densely packed cartilaginous fibers that can extend and retract, allowing them to process enormous volumes of water while retaining those smaller food items. I'm picking up some chemical responses in the surrounding water. You see, when pods gather, the harmonics that resonate through their horns apparently trigger the release of specific chemicals in their bodies, creating what our scans indicate to be expressions of joy among the group. Despite their massive size and sophisticated hunting adaptations, glow whales are, thankfully, quite gentle. And with that, I believe it's time we return this specimen to its pod. I hope you've enjoyed this expedition so far, dear traveler. I'm afraid it's time for a brief intermission. But our survey of planet 4546b is far from over. We've stayed relatively close to the surface so far, but next we'll be going deeper and searching for organisms so large they dwarf even the glow whale. Sounds dangerous. So please take this brief time to rest. When you're ready, select our next stage on the screen in front of you. Brace yourselves. Beginning ascent in three, two, one.